Hello again. Today we're taking a step back and talking about the big picture and how we try to strike a balance between finding adventure and finding sustainable experiences for our family. Hello everyone, Jason here again. We're doing a bit of a different video today. We're talking about the natural conundrum that shows up when you're into adventure activities and pushing your edge. And that is, at some point, you find your edge. And when we're talking about truly adventurous activities out in the wild, finding your edge can mean consequences. This particular topic's been on my mind a lot the last few months. Some of that's because we've been systematically introducing our kids to more and more activities that if they continue to pursue on their own at higher levels, can morph into more risk. Some of it's just been living in the COVID world for the past year and all the risks that brings. There's a lot of reasons, but honestly, it's been on my mind. So with transparency and sincerity, I wanted to share my thoughts with all of you. So this is almost a video essay, one that I hope some of you can relate to and get something out of. And frankly, just the process of talking about it always helps me continually clarify my own thinking. My family tries to keep adventure in balance. Just this winter and spring, you've seen that we've released videos exalting the virtues of snowshoeing and the slower rhythms and serenity that it can bring. And we've seen us put out videos on ice axes and technical snow climbing. And you've seen that we're in the process of exposing our boys to these techniques and experiences. What you don't see is that in the background, we have some pretty serious conversations about how we want adventure to fit into our lives. Let's define adventure first though, because it can mean a lot of different things to different people. First, I'm only talking about adventure in the context of outdoor and wilderness pursuits right now. I'm not talking about traditional games we play like soccer and baseball, or even more physical sports like football or even boxing. I'm not talking about career and other life choice adventures like having a family, although that certainly has been an adventure. So within the context of wilderness activities, I think of adventure as an endeavor where the outcome is unknown and at least somewhat likely to turn out with quote unquote negative experiences. It doesn't mean that it takes a high probability of death or dismemberment to make something an adventure, like say a high altitude climb off from the greater ranges of the world. An adventure could mean that you are legitimately not sure if you can get to the top of that rock route at your local crag and failure to make that last move could lead to a fall. And it just so happens that the nature of falling means that you could end up with a minor injury. Or maybe you abandon the climb altogether, which could result in questioning and self-doubt. So I'm not defining adventure narrowly as just dangerous. But just as the example that I gave, it does exist on a continuum. And that's because for an outcome to be unknown, it has to be on your personal edge, right near your capacity to complete it. An adventure is going to test your mental, emotional, or physical limits. Often, all three. A lot of us test our edge because while there is danger on the wrong side of that edge, there's also personal growth that comes from attempting the endeavor at all. It's because the outcome is unknown that we pull lessons from the attempt, whatever the outcome ends up being. If the outcome were guaranteed, then by definition, we could just sort of go through the motions and still get the outcome that we were after. So I distinguish adventure from pure recreation. I recreate when I'm free from stress, beyond maybe the very minor physical stresses of moving my body through whatever the activity is. The likelihood of a failure that results in physical or psychological injury is very, very low, almost completely absent. Snowshoeing then, back to my earliest example, is recreation, at least to me. But for others who are just starting, it very much could be an adventure, sure. But as I say in our Virtues of Snowshoeing video, if it's something that you do enough to get good at it, it's more of an opportunity for a connection and a walking meditation. It doesn't necessarily need to push limits. I feel the same way about camping. Then when you look at difficult rock climbing and other alpine or mountaineering pursuits from where I am in my previous experiences, these are an opportunity for adventure. Injury is always out there, which is negative enough, but as you get further afield, the results of an injury and the distance between you and help make those injuries potentially catastrophic. It's the nature of the outdoor wilderness game. I'm not going to answer the so why do it all question today. That's certainly a big part of it, and it's something that I ask myself a lot. The answers tend to evolve as I evolve. 
But what I do want to talk about is sustainability, the ability for us to continue to enjoy these activities over long lives. For me, it comes down to this. If we define our fulfillment and tie our definition of success to only improving our ability to do the next gnarly thing, if each outing has to outdo the last outing, then we're gonna end up in trouble. If I only define success as finding a new physical limit, or a new difficulty, a higher altitude, a bolder audaciousness, more seclusion, you name it, then each and every outing, I'm upping the risk level. And as the risk level goes up, so does that possibility of the catastrophic consequence. Steph Davis, an extremely accomplished rock climber, free soloist, alpinist, base jumper, and wingsuit flyer, has made the same observation when looking at the fairly nascent adventure sport of wingsuit flying. She's called out that there's this paradigm where the trajectory of progress is measured by taking more and more risky flight lines, getting closer to the rock formations, the treetops, and the dangerous wind swells. Well, that ends up in one place, getting so close to the danger that eventually you don't avoid it. And it occurred to her that she was free to reject that paradigm and look at longevity and sustainability as the paradigm of progress, not just go after ever increasing risk. So that's why you see this duality in our channel's videos between some activities that are stretching our boys' comfort levels and others that are decidedly not. We want the boys to have all kinds of experiences, drawing some kinds of lessons from pushing their boundaries and different kinds of lessons by quieting themselves and deeply inhaling the nature around them. Both have value and they need each other. For me, bringing my kids into the outdoor world has been an opportunity to step back and find enjoyment in all the small experiences of nature, the things that extended expeditions and big climbs can fool me into believing aren't really where fulfillment lies. There is very little that I can do with my boys right now that will push my particular personal boundaries. They're just too young. So it's all about connection and parenting and mentorship, passing on my love of the outside. And these experiences that I'm having with my boys and sharing on this channel have only strengthened my belief in what I'm talking about today, that we need to learn to celebrate the stuff that doesn't make it into the heart-pounding highlight reels. Celebrate it as much as the stuff that does. It reminds us to stay in balance. It reminds us that we bother doing any of this in the first place in order to bring our better selves home to the people that matter. Awesome. So our videos are a reflection of our beliefs. They may not be the right beliefs for everyone, but they're the right beliefs for us. And sustainability, longevity, these are more our watchwords than the culture of extreme. We wanna be leading ourselves out there sometimes, but not all the time. So what do you think? Let us know in the comment section what you think about adventure and the role that it can play in helping Belong. shape character, sometimes positively and sometimes negatively. If you want additional thoughts related to this video and every video we produce, along with links to the equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. If you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce educational content as well as short films about our family adventures and we release something new every week. So if you have suggestions for content you'd like to see, you can let us know that in the comments section too. Until next time, keep on getting more out of that big outside.